Now, pilgrims on this journey, you are welcome here. You are loved. You are beloved. In the fullness of who you are, we are glad you are here with us. In the Zoom or in the room or on YouTube, folks who speak differently, vote differently, look different, singles, couples, and families, new or long time, sad or joyful, doubtful or convinced, you are welcome here. People of every race, nationality, religious background, educational background, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, economic status, and physical, mental, and emotional ability, you are welcome and beloved here. We are glad that you are here right now so that we may journey together. Now, some of you know that we are having a film screening at around noontime today, and I'm not gonna tell you about it because that's Doug's job later on, but Max does have an announcement for us. Morning, everybody. Good morning. So uh, I heard Rebe tried to skip a hymn last week. I wanted to make sure we get the list right today. Um, so here are some hymns we are not singing. <clears throat> the dentist's hymn, crown him with many crowns. The contractor's hymn, the church's one foundation. The tailor's hymn, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> the optometrist's hymn, open my eyes that I might see. The waiter's hymn, fill my cup, Lord. And my personal favorite, the golfer's hymn, there is a green hill far away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you. You got it? <laughs> I think I, uh, we may have the list down now. That's good. That's good. All right. And now, Sarah, you have another announcement. This is a real one. I have a few announcements that aren't so funny. Uh, <laughs> I need some volunteers for the nursery for the next two weeks. So if anyone would like to help out, that would be gratefully appreciated. Um, just let me know. Um, also, the nursery has moved downstairs, so we'll have in the regular nursery room, it won't be up in Pilgrim Hall anymore. Thanks, Sarah. All right, now our liturgist, Julia Clark, will lead us in the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Knock, knock. God, creator of all joy. Who's there? Jesus Christ. Knock, knock. Joyful Easter people. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice in that. Yeah. 
This is the day, this is the day Jesus rose again. This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came, when the Spirit came. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This Please join me in the passing of the peace. Peace be with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of light, Scripture tells us that a cheerful heart is good medicine, that a downcast spirit dries up the bones. We have received the good news of new life this Easter. This medicine is a balm for our spirits. You have laughed at the grave and with resurrection spirits laugh with you. We pray with the one who lived and died and rose, we might rise with him. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Psalm chapter 19, verses 1 through 4a, the inclusive Bible. 1. The heavens herald your glory, O God, and the skies display your handiwork. 2. Day after day they tell their story, and night after night they reveal the depth of their understanding without speech, without words, without even an audible voice. Their cry echoes through all the world and their message reaches the ends of the earth. And from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who went with us to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, 
blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here end the readings. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Hello. So today is... Holy Hilarity Sunday, which means it is a day to laugh. We always talk about sharing our gifts um, to bring joy to others. And laughter is one of those gifts. It doesn't cost a dime and it is so easily shared. No matter how young or old we are, no matter how much money we have, we can all share the joy with others through laughter. Now, I know we don't normally laugh in church that much, but we're going to today. And kids, some of the grown-ups might need your help doing it. There are a lot of different ways we can laugh. Let's try a few. And maybe when the grown-ups see us do it, they can try it too. Let's try to laugh with our mouths wide open. <laughs> okay, now let's try laughing with our whole body. <laughs> now, laugh trying to hold it back a little bit. <laughs> okay, now give us the funniest sounding laugh you can. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Now that I see you, we're all laughing, maybe for real, after those funny laughs, we can see that when we share our laughter, it brings joy to others. The same is true when we share our other gifts, like our time, our talents, or our money. This week, let's think about ways that our sharing can bring joy to others. And let's close with a prayer. Oh God, help us to remember that we all have simple gifts to share with others in need. We never know when a smile or a song or a kind word will add joy to the heart of another. Thank you for this fun reminder and for all the laughter so easily shared in this place. Amen. Now, I have some eggs to pass out if anyone wants to volunteer to pass them out anybody thank you sydney you want me to just grab them sure okay here's the deal only take an egg if you're willing to tell a joke later in the service but 12 of you must be willing <laughs> because there are a dozen eggs all right so raise your, this is a reverse Easter egg hunt. It's, it's not like, a, it's not like a, a, a fortune cookie inside. It's just a joke. You can do it. Come on, people. All right. There you go. You'll get instructions later on. That's good, you're brave. This is, this is a good thing. Also, some people are not taking jokes because they've already agreed to tell a joke, and that's okay. Um, and uh, we also have some folks in the congregation who provided jokes and cartoons for today's service. So thank you for doing that as well. Oh, the golden egg has to go to somebody. All right. Thank you. 
Tell us that matchless test of life and resurrection, of life and resurrection, your sweetest and your best. We know the trick of tumbling, red nose and redder face, by virtue of our bumbling, ours is the jester's case, come Christ, come clown immortal, to teach that matchless jest of life and resurrection, of life and resurrection. Your sweetest and your best. You joined our sad profession, made good our foolishness, brought clowning into fashion, put on our joker's dress. Come Christ, come holy laughter to share that matchless jest of life and resurrection, of life and resurrection. Your sweetest and your best. Upon a foolish cross, Lord, you hung to make us mirth. But there you conquered loss, Lord, old death became new birth. Come everlasting joy, Christ, confirm that matchless jest of life and resurrection, of life and resurrection, your sweetest and your best. Thank you, Max. I'm gonna grab that mic, bring it over here. All right. So uh, the pastor started the service one day. She said, uh, I have three sermons in my hands. Uh, the first one lasts about five minutes and it costs $100. The second one costs about, lasts about 15 minutes, I'm buzzing lasts about 15 minutes, and it costs $50. And the third one, now that one costs $10, but it lasts a full hour. So now we're gonna take the collection. Thank you, I will either be here for 10 minutes or an hour. We're just not sure yet. You know, it says in Psalm 126, our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. That's right there in the Bible. And that is good news for us. And here's another word of good news. It can seem hard to laugh when things are difficult in the world, when we are worried, when we are anxious, but it turns out joy is not the opposite of suffering or pain, according to Matthew Fox. Joy is what sees us through both. It is good to laugh. There are studies that actually show that laughter can heal us when we are sick. So in the spirit of joy, and with the good news of Easter on our minds, here we go. Today, we're going to have a little bit of fun with some heavenly jokes. That's our theme, good heavens. And a little fun with Earth Day, too. But first, I need to make sure that uh, I catch up with Dot on something, because we've been exchanging emails back and forth. And Dot, I just wanted to let you know, by the way, that um, in honor of Earth Day, I've put all of your emails in the recycle folder. You're up next. I'm up next. <laughs> hey, Rebe. Yeah. Uh, why are recycle bins optimistic? Oh, yeah. I should. We did that in the opposite order, didn't we? Yeah, we I, did I've that. Done it. It. <laughs> hey, Max. Why are recycling bins so optimistic? Oh, because they're full of cans. Now, 
Okay, the way that this is gonna work is that when I call a number, the number that corresponds to your egg, you need to come up and if you have a, a joke that has two parts, you're the one part and I'm the other part. Got it? Does that make sense? Okay, so I need to, I need to see number one come forward for me. And you're, oh, see we're getting the drums out now, which is, this is good. Okay, so who's got number one? Who's got number one? Yeah, look, oh, well, Duncan, come on up then. Oh, okay, yeah, look in the egg. <laughs> you have number one. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Number two, you should be ready, okay? But you're not up quite yet. Why are people always tired on Earth Day? I don't know, why? Uh, because they just finished a long march. <laughs> all right, now, there was a family driving out in Pennsylvania. And they were along one of those country roads and they drove up behind an Amish carriage. The owner of the carriage obviously had a sense of humor because attached to the back of the carriage was a hand printed sign that read, energy efficient vehicle, runs on oats and grass. Caution, do not step in exhaust. Next up, John Durash has some news. Hey, Rebe, did you hear that Edith is turning 100? Wow, John, that's amazing. What's Edith's secret? She was born in 1922. <laughs> All right, folks, let's, for just a moment, let's look up to the stars. I need number, the joke number two to come forward and grab that mic from Max. Hey, Duncan, what's a light year? Oh. All right, who's got number three? Who's got number three? Have you heard about the new restaurant on the moon? The food is good, but there's no atmosphere. All right, who's got number four? All right, come on up. Thank you, Max, for serving as Oprah today. Hey, Alexis, how do astronomers organize a party? They plan it. All right, I'm looking for number five. Who's got number five? Come on up. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. <laughs> Who's got number six? How many ears does Captain Kirk have? I don't know. How many? A left ear, a right ear, and a final frontier. <laughs> Ooh, you can tell the geeks in the crowd. Okay, <laughs> who's got number seven? Hey Jeff, how do you know when the moon is going broke? When it's down to its last quarter. Now, next up, Bruce Nickerson has some good words for us. Well, to start, Max, you missed a couple. Now, I can forgive you for not knowing one of my favorite hymns, the lawyer's hymn, when I can read my title clear. But then we also have the healing hymn that they used in Bangkok when there was a dysentery epidemic. Blessed be the tie that binds. Now, many of you know that before I retired, I was an actuary, and we're always concerned in this profession with statistics and rates of things happening and whatnot. Some of us take this a little more seriously than others. And there was an actuary I met many years ago when I was just learning the profession, and he was a mentor, and I, he talked with me about various things. And one day he happened to mention that 
he'd arranged to be married, buried in Israel. And I said to him, uh, I didn't think you were Jewish. He said, no, I go to the local UCC church. So I asked him, well, then why Israel? He said, the resurrection rate is higher there. <laughs> but I really came up here to tell a story about a young man who had a religious profession, a religious calling. And he went and he joined a monastic order. Now, this was a fairly modern order. Uh, while they did chanting, uh, they also allowed people to talk and whatnot. And they even updated themselves enough to do their chanting in English. So every morning as they gathered before breakfast, uh, the abbot would start, good morning. And all the congregants, the members of the abbot would respond, good morning. And then he said, thanks be to God. And, you know, they go on this sort of thing to the morning prayer. Well, I mentioned our hero here is a young man which means despite his faith, he had these moments of rebellion. And one of these moments, when the abbot started, good morning, and the congregation answered, good morning, he said, good evening, and without missing a beat, the abbot continued, someone chanted evening. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you hear the one about the crooked painter who watered down his paint on a church steeple? No, what happened? The first rain, it ran all off. No. The preacher found out what happened, though. And what did she say? Repaint, repaint, and thin no more. <laughs> That's my literally favorite church joke ever. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for number nine to hop up here. So a pastor, a priest, and a rabbi walked into a bar, and the bartender asks, what is this, a joke? The pastor invited the kids forward to the chancel steps and began the children's message with a question. Kids, what's furry, chitters, climbs trees, and eats acorns? Pastor Julia, I know the answer has to be Jesus, but it sounds like a squirrel to me. <laughs> All right, so a man dies and goes to heaven. St. Peter meets him at the pearly gates and says, here's how it works. You need a hundred points to get into heaven. You tell me all the good things that you have done, and I will give you a certain number of points for each item, depending on how good it was. And when you reach a hundred points, you get in. Okay, says the man. Well, I was married to the same person for 50 years, and I never cheated on them, and I loved them deeply in my whole heart. That's wonderful, said Peter, and that's worth two points. Two points, the man says. Well, I attended church, church all my life, and I supported its ministry with my tithes and my service. Terrific, said Peter. That's certainly worth one point. One point? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I started a soup kitchen in my city, and I worked in a shelter for homeless veterans. Well, that is really fantastic, Peter said. That's another two points. Two points? Exasperated, the man cried out to Peter, at this rate, the only way I'm going to get into heaven is by the grace of God. And Peter said, bingo, 100 points, come on in. That is both a joke and a sermon, just so y'all know. Next, to wrap it up, I think we need to go a little bit more biblical, and so I need number 10 to come on up here.
So Rebe, what kind of man was Boaz before he married Ruth? Ruthless. Uh... How about number 11? Come on up. Maybe. What kind of car did the apostles drive? I don't know. What kind? A Honda. The Bible says that they were all in one accord. How about number 12 now? I think Julia is number 12. <laughs> Do you know how Daniel saved his life in the lion's den? No. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was astonished that the hungry lions had not eaten Daniel. He summoned Daniel and promised him that if he would reveal his secret, the king would give him his freedom. It was easy, your excellency, Daniel said. I went around and whispered in each lion's ear, after dinner, there will be speeches. I'll take the mic, and that is just about all for now. I'm going to wrap up with just a couple of more announcements that we missed at the beginning. The class on prophecy has been canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. The peacemaking meeting scheduled for today has been canceled due to a conflict. <laughs> but just so y'all know, the fasting and prayer conference, it does include meals. Now, we are going to sing a hymn now. Um, I, I was thinking about the shoe repairer's hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. <laughs> but then I thought about the travel agent's hymn, Anywhere With Jesus. And then I thought about the geologist's hymn, Rock of Ages. But actually, we're going to sing a hymn that is in your hymn insert. It is to the tune Ode to Joy, and it is about laughter. So let's sing together.
we'll take it a little bit more seriously for a minute, but we will start with our joys. Are there things that you are thankful for on this day? I have one that I missed from last week, so I'm gonna read it. Thank you for the scientists and their employers for the protections and the cares that have been brought and are still bringing to fight against deadly diseases. We are thankful for scientists and, and the people who make their work possible. Who else has a Thanksgiving that you would like to lift up today? Where is the mic? I'm gonna grab the mic again, just in case we have one that we wanna lift up. And the Zoom folks, please know that I'm gonna come your way in just a second. Can anybody have a joy today? First. How can we not be joyful for this beautiful day? Indeed, it is beautiful outside, joyful for the day. Are there others that you would lift up? We've got a lot of folks who are doing better after medical procedures right now, and that is really, really good news. Um, we are thankful that Joe C. is home from the hospital after his surgery this week. We're thankful that Judy is continuing to improve. Um, we are thankful that Liz, Peter and Mary's daughter, even though she had surgery at the uh, very unexpectedly this week, is improving and getting better. So we're thankful for those who are improving and we give thanks for their healing. I'm coming over to the Zoom to see if we have folks who are here with prayers, joys first. All righty. I'll come back in just a second for concerns that you might have. Are there concerns that you want to lift up in your prayers today? Marjorie. From Margaret brought to the hospital for emergency surgery. Can you lift her up? And Zoom folks, I'm coming over to check with you to see if there's prayers that you would lift up today. All right. Friends, let us be in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. O oh, holy source of laughter, we thank you for giving us this gift. For all things harmlessly quaint, incongruous, and unexpectedly absurd, for pomposity that falls on its face, for children and adults chuckling over a riddle for lovers enjoying each other's quirks of character, for cartoonists bringing us laughter, for explorers cracking jokes in the face of danger, for folks who are patients and laugh with their nurses, and for the saints who throw laughter into the jaws of evil. We give thanks for joy. We give thanks for scientists and those who make their research possible because it restores joy. We give thanks for each person who is healing on this day, for Joe and Judy and Liz and all others. We pray for those who are in the midst of hardship, anxiety, depression, fear, or grief. 
And we pray for those who are in need of healing for medical reasons or for mental health reasons. We pray for Margaret and for S. We pray for each person dealing with illness. We give thanks for Jesus, our healer and our teacher, our teacher who used the most strange and quirky sayings to bring wisdom. The camel trying to squeeze through the eye of a needle, the man with a plank in his eye, who tries to shift a speck from a neighbor's eye, the woman who breaks bread for her family and makes a hundred kilograms of it, the man who lights a lamp only to put it under a bed, the woman who finding one lost coin throws a party. With an Easter faith that can laugh because it knows that nothing could ever cut us off from the love of God in Christ Jesus, we pray on this day, O oh, source of holy laughter, thank you for giving us the gift and for the faith and hope that allows us to laugh. We laugh because you first laughed on our behalf. So thanks a million, God. And we pray it in Jesus' name, and we are bold to pray the words Jesus taught us, saying, our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Doug Johnston forward for what promises to be an excellent dad joke. And also a serious word. Good morning. Continuing our, with our Lenten theme of creation, care, and climate justice in honor of Earth Week, Pilgrim will host a Zoom showing of the film Youth Be Gov at noon today, starring climate change superheroes, the young people who will not let us forget that we are only temporary caretakers of the world, which will be theirs. The film is sponsored by Interfaith Power and Light, we heard last month from Matt Saragian about the Massachusetts chapter, which Pilgrim supports. Their activities help all of us to be caring stewards. We'll also show the locally made film, Save Tomorrow, featuring members of Pilgrim Church, and we'll have a group discussion. If you wanna join and haven't yet received the Zoom link, see me after the service for a copy. How do we avoid feeling overwhelmed when faced with climate change? Seek stories where determined individuals are making a difference. A 500-year-old Sitka spruce in Alaska's Tongass National Forest, marked with a blue slash to be cut down, preserved by local action, including tribal groups which once survived by allowing logging, now selling carbon credits. The Tongass, Narrow coastal strip on the map holds 10 billion tons of CO2, twice what the entire US emits in a year. And a collective effort of farmers, agricultural scientists, geneticists, and bakers in Kansas, perfecting Kernza, a perennial wheatgrass, which in 20 short years of development has reached one third the yield of annual monoculture wheat with much less water, fertilizer, and energy. The topsoil is rebuilt and the bread tastes great. The group knows the work will span generations and is proud to leave this legacy and challenge for their children. Back home in Lexington, Pilgrim Mission provides financial support for the Interfaith Garden. After a two year absence, the garden is again seeking hundreds, seeking volunteer gardeners at all skill levels to plant, nurture, harvest, 
and deliver hundreds of pounds of produce to the Lexington Food Pantry. This is the 13th year of the garden. There have been dozens of volunteer gardeners from at least 15 faith communities, ages elementary school to senior citizens. Barbara Munkries was Pilgrim's coordinator for many years until the pandemic and did a super job. Talk to Mary Mackey or Reverend Reapy if you wanna join the fun. And finally, combining the themes of heavenly hilarity and tackling tough problems, the oral exam question for a doctorate in cosmology. Define the universe, give three examples. <laughs> All righty, thank you, Doug. And we are reminded of all that our mission giving does. And that's just one thing that our church's giving does. And so now we will contemplate giving with our offertory. of God's smile, alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone, alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. We're the proof of God's good us at our word. Alleluia, all creation. Alleluia, everyone. Alleluia, all creation. Alleluia, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray our prayer of dedication. Lord, we know you love a cheerful giver, or a better translation might be, the Lord loves a hilarious giver. So we give freely and gladly out of a heart of joy and laughter 
Use our gifts and our Easter spirit to spread your joy. Amen. So before we sing our closing hymn, I will just point out that I had missed the one next to it. I'm sorry I did not choose it, uh, but I'll just let you all read the words uh, for one second there before we sing Thine is the Glory, number 193 in the Pilgrim Hymnal. Now, before we go, we are missing at least a couple of jokes. Come here, John. <laughs> Grab the mic. Knock, knock. Who's there? Surrealist cow. Surrealist cow who? Rutabaga. <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting Moo. cow. Now go with th this news. Someone said there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Lord. And others who wake up and say, oh, Lord, it's morning. 
May we be the first kind of person, at least on most days, because we have heard the good news of the love of God, of a God who inspires joy in our living each and every day. Amen. Amen. Uh...